Hey, this is the old gaming geezer. Welcome along to part 19 of the indeterminate stuff. Now, I am currently putting together the final part of my dual mission on the expressway to heck, which is a couple of probes which we're going to bring you out there. And I'm not going to show you the whole docking. I'm just going to bring my little space tug over and I'm going to attach it onto one of those probes stuck onto that, uh, that launcher there. And uh, here it is. We're coming in to, to dock with the probe now. We're going to bring it across. Now, this is the last of the launches that I, I did before I ran out of money. Um, after I launched this, I had 17,000 credits, simoleons, collars. I don't know what it's called. Left. So uh, I had very little, very little money left after this. So I was in a little bit of a bind. But here we are bringing the first probe in. Uh, I'm using docking uh, Clampatron Juniors for the docking ports on the probe. Uh, and they're on the front of the uh, docking pods on either side of the expressway to heck ship that I've got there. And there, first one docked. And this is, it's pretty standard. The second one comes in. And, um, second one comes straight in. I dock that too. We don't really have to think about this too much. But it docks and it's all good. Now, as I was saying, I'm broke. Man, I'm so broke. So I did a couple of missions from the fine print mod, uh, including flying around through a couple some um, navigation points around Kerbal, uh, which netted me a little bit of cash. Uh, but I also noticed that I had a contract to plant a flag on Duna. Guess what I've got around Duna? I've got Jeb, Bill, and Bob. So Jeb finally gets to land on Duna, and uh, he slows down with his parachutes. There's still so much fuel left in this uh, Duna lander that I figured this is going to be a cinch. Uh, and it was a cinch. Uh, I so over-engineered this lander that I could just... I, I could probably land it a third time on Duna, because I've already landed it once on Duna. I've landed it on Ike. And it looks like I'm going to be able to land it again on Duna, which is amazing. This is uh, this wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened, so I'm very happy with it. So I get Jeb down, and Jeb plants his flag on Duna. And look at those lovely clouds on the surface of Duna. That just looks fantastic. I really, I really like it. So Jeb uh, plants his flag, and we're all good to go for the next phase of the mission now that we've got some cash. So this netted us, this mission netted us, netted us about 150,000 credits, let's call them. I don't really know. But it, we got money. We're good to go. We're good for the next phase. And the next phase of our mission is to bring a crew up to the expressway to heck, because there's only a couple of guys on there, and I want to have at least four guys on there, so... I'm actually going to put five uh, on the expressway to heck right now. So on this ship, uh, this space plane, which is a passenger space plane made with the space plane plane bleh, space plane plus parts, is uh, Jan Kerman, Dilbury Kerman, and Kenbury Kerman on their first flight out of Kerman, and they're going on a long trip out to Jewel. Yes, they are. Uh, so I made this uh, space plane with the space plane plus parts, which are now part of the most recent version of the game. However, th uh, the indeterminate stuff is, will not be upgraded uh, because I'm using so many parts from uh, B9 Aerospace version 4 uh, that I can't upgrade because the version 4 parts are going to break um, as soon as I upgrade to version 5 of B9 Aerospace and then upgrade to 0.25 of Kerbal Space Program. So we're going to stick with uh, version 0.24 for the moment. Uh, and so I'm getting the space plane up into orbit, and that's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so now we're approaching the uh, expressway to heck. Uh, very simple... Um, very simple rendezvous. I managed. I'm getting better at rendezvous. Uh, I didn't show the rendezvous because it actually took quite a while, as they normally do with me. But I'm getting better at. It. I'm beginning to get the hang of getting my ships close together in space. Ah, <laughs> in space. So you know, I like that. I like that space plane. Um, I don't really have a name for it yet. Maybe I'll, I'll name it at some point in the future. But uh, I really love those swept forward wings. I, I just think they look cool. I don't know how how. Um, how good they are aerodynamically in real life, but uh, I think they look super hot, so uh, that's what I'm doing. So we get up close to the expressway to heck, and uh, we're not actually docking. We're just going to get close, and the guys are going to get out, get out, and um, and EVA over to the expressway to heck. 
And there we are. We've come up close. We've uh, zeroed our velocity. And Jan Kerman gets out. And he EVAs over to the expressway to heck. Now, I'm not going to show everybody EVAing over because that will take quite a while. Uh, but uh, Jan is going to go over there and he's going to get into the hitchhiker pod. The reason why I need five guys in there is because I'm going to have two pilots for the uh, landers, two guys for the science lab, and one guy in the copula pod there piloting. And so Jan is in. And uh, Dilbury and Kenbury are going to get out and go over there as well. But we're going to cut to the next bit now. And the next bit is we're going to bring this guy home. Again, I'm not going to show all of this. Uh, but, you know, I tried to get it close enough to the Kerbal Space Center. I have a little bit of jet fuel left in this plane. So I'm going to attempt to actually land it on the runway. Which, um, if you remember from my uh, old space shuttle, I never actually managed to do that. Uh, managed to land it in the sea several times, but this one I'm actually going to try and land. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. I'm going to try and land it at the KSC this time. And so I start to uh, slow down as we hit the atmosphere, and I figure I'm going a little bit too fast, so I'm using a method that the space shuttle used to use that I've seen Scott Manley do, so I'm trying to ape him, as you know. Um, I... Um, Basically turn my plane a little bit into the wind, my wings a little bit into the wind to, sh to slow myself down. Uh, banking hard to do so, and then banking the opposite way to correct my course and to slow myself down a little bit more. Uh, because I figured I was coming in really hot. Uh, I thought I'd come in way too high and way too fast as we're crossing, now beginning to cross the ocean just before the continent with the KSC on it. And uh, I'm slowing myself down. And it's... This plane is handling quite well, I must say. Um, I've had problems with uh, space planes flipping out, as we've seen in the past. But eventually I slow down. I actually slowed down a little bit too much. I probably didn't need to do that. Uh, but we're coming down now. Those are the mountains to the uh, west of the KSC, but I've got to get over them. So I've got a little bit of fuel left. So we fire up my jet engines. And uh, the, sh well, the plane's a little bit squirrely under power. A little bit shaky because it's missing all the fuel that it had. It's missing the, it's missing its passengers. It's, it's but it's getting there, and I get it over the mountains, I'm flying through the clouds, we're closing on the KSC. And any minute now, we're gonna break through the clouds, and we'll see the runway. This plane is beautiful. I love this plane. I love forward swept wings. Love them. And uh, there we are. We're closing. I've got some, some whatever that is on the runway. Um, it's giving me a distance from the KSC. We're about 15 kilometers out. Uh, oh, sorry. It was about 10 kilometers out. So here we are. And there we I finally see the runway. Drop my landing gear. Shut off my engines. Coming in fast, but uh, I think I can make it. Dropping fast. <laughs> Dropping a little bit too fast there, but uh, to hit my brakes. Get low. Line up for the runway. I'm trying to cut my velocity there by flaring so far out. But uh, we're slowing down quite well. I'm trying to straighten up on the runway. And I get myself down. I'm a little bit worried about my speed. And so I flare again just before we hit. And we're down on the runway. Plane almost tips over, but it all worked out in the end. <laughs> Great. Excellent. <laughs> Landed. And so the next part of the mission is to bring up fuel to the Satanta. And I'm going to um, basically do two missions in one here. I need to take a couple of guys off the Satanta, so I'm, I've put that pod up on the top, and there's only one Kerbin inside it. And here we are dropping our beautiful uh, solid rocket boosters, and a wonderful display there. Oh, not great. And so this ship is uh, bringing up an orange tank, which is going to dock onto the back of the Satanta. It's going to bring it out with it, and it's going to be back as a drop tank in orbit. Now, as you can see, it's a bit wobbly, but we drop off our launch stage. And then we transfer. Now, this was a pretty good launch for me. I actually managed to do a very close launch to rendezvous. Uh, I'm not going to show the whole thing, obviously, but we get in there quite quickly. And uh, it slows down as we get in close. Now, I need to drop the uh, small transfer rocket on the back of that, but I want to drop it in such a way that it there's very little danger of it actually hitting any of my ships here. So I'm turning around and putting a little slight spin on everything. Um, and pointing it away from the ships as the uh, decoupler shoots it away. So we've lost that now, and now that reveals the docking port on the back of that fuel tank, which I am going to angle around and bring it in to dock 
with the Satanta. So I'm just angling it towards the north because that's the way I've got the, the docky port on the back of the Satanta's angle towards the south. So I just need to angle line them up and bring them into dock. Beautiful. So the Satanta now is ready to go. It's fully fueled up, but there's too many guys on. So I'm actually taking two guys off the Satanta. And this is the second guy I'm taking off. I can't remember which Kerbal that is. But I had a little bit of a problem here. I was messing around with the camera and I accidentally <laughs> smashed him into a solar panel. So now we've got uh, one solar panel missing off this ship and it's floating away in space all on its own. Oh, and that was my own stupid fault because um, yeah, I was playing with the cameras, which changes the way the thrusters work. And <laughs> well, I'm embarrassed. What can I say? So uh, this this Kerbin gets back, uh, comes over to the uh, other end of the fuel tank, which has got a uh, capsule on it. And there we see the <laughs> solar panel floating away into space. Oh, dear. Uh, well, anyway, so this guy gets in and we are uh, ready to detach now. And this ship is pretty much ready to go. We're one solar panel short, but that's okay. So this uh, this this pod is just going to detach. It's going to come down and land. Um, I put some landing gear on it just for funsies. I don't really know why. And uh, so we turn around and we burn away as the solar panel floats past us. <laughs> so we only have uh, 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 RCS and monoprop to slow us down here, but that's okay. It's a light ship. It won't take us long to get back. And in fact, the whole landing is fairly standard. As we say goodbye to the Satanta, she won't be seen again for many a year. For she's going to be flying away to the planet Jew very, very soon. As soon as the launch window opens. To a great adventure. I was going to do a grand tour of the Julian system, but I don't think I've got the skills. But anyway, this, uh, this lander, as I said, standard landing. Fortunately, we landed in the sea at night, but we got down and everybody was safe. All happy. Nothing to report. And so next, we must go to Jewel. The first thing we gotta do in preparing to go to Jewel is to uh, detach the little space tug, which we no longer need. It, it's, it's served us well in putting the ship together, but uh, it's not going out to Jewel with us because, well, we don't need it. So we get it out of the way. Now, I need to set up my transfer orbits to go to Jewel, uh, my maneuver nodes, and uh, I do a lot of faffing about adjusting and adjusting, trying to get it all working out, and well, you know, it took quite a long time for me to set up, because I had to do it for both ships, and it took bloody ages, so I'm not going to show all that. Instead, I'm going to show this wobbly ship as it wobbles around, trying to uh, get it oriented correctly to do its burn, and this ship just, just... <laughs> It's a terrible design. I will not be using this design again. It, it just it just wobbles the whole time. But it, it's stable enough. It's uh, at no time were we uh, worried about an unplanned disassembly. But, I mean, look at it. It's just wobbling like a big wobbly jelly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I get that turned around. So eventually get it on its maneuver node, even though it wobbles around quite a bit. And we... Fast forward a little bit until it's time to burn. And so here we are, burning. First burn to Jewel. Now, I need to take advantage of the Oberth effect here because as you can see, it's gonna take about 35 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes to do this burn. And it's gonna be the same with the other ship. The other ship's gonna be slightly quicker, but not very much. So what I'm doing is I'm burning for two minutes at the lowest point in my orbit and uh, raising my uh, apoapsis around Kerbin. And then going out and coming back in. As I fall back down, I increase speed. And then I burn again, burning the uh, energy of the, the fuel, but also utilizing the um, the kinetic energy of the fuel, which helped me fall. Uh, so kind of cheating a little bit to get a little faster and faster. I say cheating. It's something that happens in real life. I'm doing exactly the same thing with the Satanta here. I'm just transferring a little bit of fuel from the drop tank there as I angle this one around. And this one has similar design problems. It doesn't quite wobble as much as act like a pendulum with that huge fuel tank hanging off the back of it. It's... <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really think these designs through that well. It's got a huge fuel tank in the middle. 
huge fuel tank at the back. Well, not quite as huge, and it it it's very difficult to very difficult to maneuver because it's just those two fuel tanks just want to wobble and wobble and wobble. It wouldn't be so bad if I had the Clapotron Senior docking ports unlocked, but unfortunately, I don't at this point. So a uh, little bit of time warp there. We're getting ready to hit our maneuver node. Um, and let's cut to that now. And here we are. We are burning the Satanta on its way out to Jewel. And look at that one wobbling as well. Oh. We really have to come up with a new way to a new design for some of these ships. Although this one works pretty well, except for the whole pendulum motion. I probably wouldn't need that fuel tank at the back if I wasn't carrying so much extra fuel in the in the uh, Tylo lander, which is between the the drag tank and the main ship. Uh, and so both ships are burning, burning, going out, coming back in. I had to do this over and over again, probably about six or seven passes for each ship. Um, bringing them out high and then dropping them back down low. And there's a, we can see the orbit of one of the ships there. I think that's the expressway to heck orbit. Setting up maneuver nodes so I can burn at the right time back down at the bottom. And again, here is the Satanta also doing the same thing and wobbling around as it does it. But uh, the Satanta had a problem, which I didn't foresee, but I should have. I had a fuel throw problem. I realized that the engines were actually burning the fuel from the Tyler lander. So I had to start pumping fuel back into the Tylo lander as the Satanta was going out on towards its Apoaps around Kerbin. Uh, so I had to spend quite a lot of time refueling the Tylo lander. And uh, basically, and then I shut down all of the power to the fuel tanks on the Tylo lander so that I could burn with impunity without, without using that fuel. Because it would have been very funny if I'd have started descending to Tylo only to realize I had no fuel in the bloody ship. That would have been a disaster. A disaster that I don't want to think about. But anyway, I get it fueled up again and uh, start burning again. This is the expressway to heck. There's a lot of burning. This took me spent several, I don't know, two or three hours to uh, get these guys out. And they were still raising my apoapsis around Kerbin on both ships. It was a lot, a lot of time spent doing this. A lot of time. <laughs> But eventually, um, eventually, we eventually broke orbit, and there is the expressway to, to heck coming back in to burn again. Uh, Mechjeb was uh, was very important in this. Now, I was thinking about uh, some of the some of the words that are used to describe orbits in uh, in Kerbal Space Program. We have uh, well, there's me dropping the drop tank on the back of the Satanta. I was thinking of uh, the words to describe uh, the apoapsis and the periapsis. We use uh, different words for different planets here. Apoapsis and periapsis are generic terms. Uh, but around the sun, uh, we use perihelion and apohelion or aphelion, depending on who you say to. But in Kerbin, the, the Kerbin sun is called Kerbal, so why not? You know, I was thinking, well, we need a, a name for, for the apoapsis and periapsis around Kerbal sun, so I was thinking maybe we could use... Apple ball or cur or, or peri ball, but that just sounds silly. So I was thinking of maybe apple nut and peri nut. That also sounds silly. So I thought of a new one. I think I think I think we should officially call them apple nad and peri nad. I think that's going to work much better because you know to stop people saying apple helion and and perihelion, which are just totally wrong in this sort of situation. So apple nad. So there I am getting my apple nad. High up towards Jewel's orbit, and there we have our Jewel encounter at my Aponad. And so there is the Satanta leaving Kerbin. It's not going to be back for a long time. It's a long trip out to Jewel. And here's the expressway to Heck, also on its way out to Jewel. We'll see that in the next episode. This is the old gaming geezer. Good night. Farewell. If you like this video, please hit like below. If you really like this video, hey, why don't you subscribe? Good night.